backstage with Mothership on Solid Rock Radio begins now. Hear the best in new music, artist interviews, stories from the road, and more. You are now backstage, and here's your host, Mothership. Hey everybody, Stonewall Static's new album is finally here. I had a talk with them the day after the album released, and then a few days later at Kingdom Come Festival. So in February of 2022 was the last time we talked that 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 does not <laughs> Feels seem like a couple like... months ago yeah we were talking about pedestrian vibe back then yeah you were sadly. already <laughs> sadly you were already releasing songs and that sort of thing so it's been a hot minute but it finally dropped last night at midnight yeah finally you had uh some tough obstacles i think on this journey for this album do you feel comfortable talking about maybe, Josh, what you've been going through and, and how that affected uh, this release? Yeah, so basically what happened is, let's say w- what we announced it in December of 2021, right? Yes. Yeah, and so what, what was happening is we had a whole schedule laid out of exactly what we were going to be doing, what we were going to do on what day. Like, we had it mapped out, so we're like, okay, this is setting us up for an April 30th release. That was the original release, right? It was something like yeah, that. Something like April twenty first. I don't know. So basically, around mid March, I started developing these weird neurological type symptoms, and um, they were presenting similar to like multiple sclerosis or something mm-hmm. like that. And so, you know, immediately, like I'm like, this is really abnormal. Like I, I could not keep my balance, couldn't walk without assistance. Um, and I was always dizzy. It was like I was in a constant state of vertigo. So I call up my primary care physician. I'm like, okay, how long is it going to take me to get in? And they're like, well, about a month. And I'm like, oh, well, that's just great. All that studio time we had now, like, I can barely hold my drumsticks, you know. It's just, I could, like, kind of play, but, like, I couldn't give anything studio quality. So that got put on the back burner. And then uh, I go to my doctor in April, and then... This was like about two weeks before we were about to release the album. And he's like, "Okay, well, this is going to kind of be a long process. It's going to be a kind of a diagnosis of elimination, you know, because they also are going to check for like fibromyalgia and like, you know, a bunch of other things. So it's now May. Album should have been released by now. I'm still not getting any better. Then June comes two shows like in the state of Texas. We go and do those shows. I like barely made it. It was like really, really tough, but I did it anyway because we didn't want to cancel them. And now, fast forward to July, I'm starting to get a little better. And now we got to go on tour. And so then we that was our that was our tour with Brutality. Yeah, we were on the road with Brutality uh, for about two weeks. It was another couple of months. And finally, in about I'd like to say October, uh, me and my doctor figured out what it was, and it was a side effect of a medication I was taking that was causing it all so you know it was great because it's like well it wasn't multiple sclerosis it wasn't fibromyalgia but it's like oh well i wasted all this time i could have just stopped taking this specific medication it could fix the problems a long time ago that's really what set everything kind of on the path that it is now but you know all things in god's timing i'm back at pretty much a hundred percent albums out now you know all of us are in you know much better places than we were so, yeah, you know, God's sovereignty prevails. He wanted us to release it last night and not last year. So Amen. that's where we are. Did it uh, change the direction of the album in any way? No, because all the songs were written. It, it was, was a studio issue. A production issue, too. Yeah. So, yeah, the album direction didn't really change at all. The only The only thing that I think it affected album-wise was... I think it was. Oh, should I even bring that up? What? Or should I just gaslight all of the fans into thinking that it was always nine songs? <laughs> yeah, just gaslight them. I'm just gonna gaslight. It was always nine songs. That's all. Okay. It was always nine songs. So there was and no you change can put at all. that in there. You can put that in there. You can tell them they said that. And you're yeah. crazy if you think anything different. Yeah. yeah, if you think anything different, you're crazy. Dude, your gaslighting isn't real. You're just crazy. <laughs> Okay, I believe you. <laughs> Good, because it's what happened. Well, what else has happened in the last year and a half since I talked to you? Uh, yeah, I got married. Uh, her name's Luca, and she's just the coolest. 
And the funniest part is we met at a Stonewall Static show. So if this whole thing was for nothing other than for me to meet my wife, I don't know about these guys, but I'm happy. That's awesome. What was it like to finally get this album released? I'll be 100% honest. It felt really weird. Because (laughs) when you have an album that's been delayed for so long and you've been sitting on it, mulling it over for so long, You've pretty much created everything you need to create for it. You've lived with it longer than your fans have. And so by the time you release it, um, you feel like you've lived through its whole cycle, even though you technically haven't. It almost feels like you should be putting out the next one already, but you're not. And you still have a long way to go. And that album has only just begun. It's a weird feeling to be behind on everything um, I, I remember the night that it released, I was sitting in front of my computer uh, waiting to figure out like, like, OK, the album's just dropped. What do I need to do? What like marketing assets do I need to make all the stuff that I need to handle? My wife walks in the room and she's like, what are you doing? And I'm like trying to figure out what I need to do right now. And she's like, you've had the album for a year. You've done it already. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I guess I have. And it was a really bizarre feeling. But um, it, it's still kind of weird to think that it's out. Um, mainly right now, I'm just I'm just hoping to hear some uh, feedback on how people liked it, see see what their thoughts were and see where we want to go from here. Have you seen any feedback yet? People are thinking it's good uh, from what I can <laughs> tell. My mom also thinks it's good. So we'll have to see if the fans are being as honest as my mother first comment Um, yeah (laughs) (laughs) but hopefully people take to it like they seem to take to transistor and it's a thing (laughs) (laughs) i noticed that you aren't afraid to go all over the place with your sound that's uh that's for danger (laughs) (laughs) each song it was like kind of a little bit different flavor what's that all about It's all of our influences bleeding into one pot of soup, music soup, and it's it's got a little bit of everything in it, but we feel like it works and we think it tastes good. So we eat it anyway. Yeah, it's nothing like a good soup uh, for sure. What do you think is the most important song on the album? Mike and Margaret, because it shows that we go heavier and I want to go heavier in the future. Mm -hmm. I like that one a lot. We want to we want to go heavier and lighter at the same time. It's like we want to we want to do it in a friendly way, in a way that makes people who wouldn't typically listen to harder genres want to want to enter into that realm and and kind of enjoy the energy that that gives off like that. that super just, you know, want to get in a pit, start jumping, banging your head kind of thing. Um, Because there's a lot of people that would like it, but they they don't know where to start or the sounds are too intimidating. And we feel like we kind of try to give that approach to a pop listener. What yeah, do you that's think? what happened with me. Started listening to Easy Listening Demon Hunter, the ballads. There and you go. Threw me in. How it goes. <laughs> that's right. It's no one just, better to do it than Demon Hunter. I'm telling you, it was a, a slippery slope. Yes, it is. As far as most important song on the album goes for me i i don't know that i can even say i might have been able to say like a year ago but now it's like to me i see pedestrian vibe as a whole project that tells a story of a world that suffers from fear of rejection lack of security and people trying to find that and just that desperate search for hope Um, And I feel like all of the songs were kind of designed to take you through some of the mindsets and some of the journey of of figuring all of that out for yourself. And so to me, hopefully people sit down and listen through the entire thing, whether it's at all at once or in bits. But hopefully they get the picture that that there is hope and that you have to find it outside of yourself and outside of just the people around you it's something much higher do each of you have a song that's very personal on the album i think the most personal for me is probably mike and margaret as well because that that was the one like we cooked it up and it's not the most intense song we've done but i think it is the heaviest and um that was the one like 
you know, I was showing like some of our peers the work tapes and they're like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. And so not for typical reasons, like, oh, it's close to my heart, like lyrically, but just the way that song sounds, it was exciting for me to work on. And I like the direction it's like propelling us into going forward. Okay, so people are going to want to know, who are Mike and Margaret? If you're a fan of Stonewall Static and you've followed our social media accounts or you've seen uh, even the Cozy Town music video, you'll notice that we almost seemingly introduce some characters into the mix to embody certain things. Margaret is a character that um, shows up in the Cozy Town music video, and you'll end up seeing more of her soon as we go through more music videos and more content. All of that info can be found on a secret web page that's built into our website. And if you go through our social media, you can find that web page. You can find where that link is, and there's a password that's guarded to it. And uh, that password's also hidden in the Light of You music video. Um, so you can go in, break into that website, and there's a bunch of documents and everything there because we wanted to kind of create a, a a bit of a journey for the fans as well who graciously listen to our music. So if they want to dive deeper into our minds and what we wanted to do with Stonewall Static, then they can try to follow along, so to speak, ARG-type story that we've created through secret web pages and documents. Um, It'll make Mike and Margaret make more sense. But in a loose sense, Mike and Margaret are basically the world that tells you... The powers that be. Yeah, and the, or the powers that be that tell you, hey, you need to be this to fit in. Or, hey, you need to fall in line with this to you know be accepted in society when really the only thing that you need to be accepted and to feel the security of being accepted is christ that's it interesting tell us a little bit about cozy town so the song when did i write that song i wrote it like two years ago i believe um and it came from kind of the concept of the whole album it was like okay well how can i tell a story of people looking for acceptance security and identity how can I set that up for uh, the rest of this album? And what if we started off in this fictional town that was basically like, hey, come on in. If you do everything right, we'll love you. Because that's kind of what the world says. It's, hey, be like God and we'll treat you like God. But nobody can do that. That's very apparent through human history and through the first several seconds of your life. Because the first thing that you do when you come into the world is scream and cry. And if you're screaming and crying, something's already wrong. Cozy Town is that place of people who say, come and be this amazing thing and we'll treat you like this amazing thing. Or come and do this work and this work and this work and then we'll love you. Rather than actual love, which is unconditional, which is something that only Christ can give you. So it kind of sets up the setting for the whole album of the context of what someone might be going through, feeling all the things that we describe in the other songs. Did you do the Cozy Town first and then build on it? Or did you have the other songs kind of already in mind or a little of both? Um some of the other songs were modified a little bit to kind of slip in. But for the most part, most of the songs that I just happened to write lyrics for for this album kind of encapsulated that feeling because it was something that I was really dealing with and mentally wrestling with at the time. Uh, so it just kind of came out like that and mm -hmm. ended up working out in that sense. Is there any other song that you'd like to highlight that's on the album? Odd Duck Inn was was a very interesting one. I recorded it on this goofy old Takamini guitar. It doesn't have uh, any electronics in it. Yeah, no electronics in it. Um, it's got a hole in the top of it. Yeah, it's like this. Not a sound hole either. It's like it's damaged. It's yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> damaged hole. Um, and. I, I just I pulled it out and I was like, I'm just going to use this janky guitar. So I recorded it in the weirdest possible way I could. I put like 
I, I like two mics and like maybe even a phone microphone or something on it just because I, I wanted it to sound janky and I just I recorded it and it sounded jankier than I thought it would. And I was like, is this going to work? I'm going to have to re-record this later. But then um, Josh and my dad walk into the studio and they're like, what is that? And I was like, it's the Takamini guitar. And they were like, OK, that has to stay. So they sat they're engineering the sound for the guitar and rather than making it this big anthemic song that we thought we were going to we actually stripped it down to just center in on this guitar and this close tight-knit feel and we ran with it and it was just it, it ended up being something that we thought was really really cool uh something that felt fresh for us it, it was a lot of fun working on that one I was like, now I have to go back and listen again. What kind of merch do you have for Pedestrian Vibe? Have we got hard copies? Or are we doing shirts? So we have Pedestrian Vibe hoodies that we're selling. They're really nice. They're super soft. I love them. I love them to death. So we're selling those. And then we won't have hard copies for a little bit because we want to make the hard copies as, as pristine as we can. Um, but we will be getting them. So we'll have them available on download cards. More merch from Pedestrian Vibe will be coming soon. But we're also we're working on an online store that's going to have a lot of really good designs. So that hopefully will come out in the future as well. What are some of the upcoming shows you might have that you can tell us about? We have a two-week-long tour that will be in the fall that is in the works right now. And we are going to places we have never been before. Nice. We also are uh, headlining Chains Unchained Festival in July. So we're headlining day one. Convictions is headlining day two. And that is going to be a lot of fun. Chains Unchained is one of our favorite festivals. Amazing group of people to run that place. And what else we got? We've got... Oh, yeah. On, on said tour, there there is rumor that we may or may not be leaving the country for the first time. So that's really exciting to us and uh, hopefully some of our international friends. And what else? And we're going to get started on album three as soon as possible. It's going to happen, and our vow to each other is that we're going to make sure it doesn't have to get delayed by a year again. We're not going to pull a tool. We're not going <laughs> to pull a tool. A tool. <laughs> Anybody have a story? I feel like there might be one. Daniel, yeah, do you want to plug the basket weaving for him? That's, that's, like, a that that two, that's like a two. That's like a that's like a two second bit, though. It is. You can't. This is a bit that you can't set up. That's true. That's true. You can't. You can't set up that bit. We have. I'm sorry. We have bits for interviews and stuff to throw off interviewers, but <laughs> we can't it, do that to you. We can't. We can't. We can't do that to you. And we can't do it when it's not like like you can't look at somebody and say, "Hey, do the bit." It doesn't work that way. <laughs> You're in it, dude. Bro, I'm going to laugh. Give me like 5 seconds, I swear. <laughs> no, well, I feel some like shenanigans this, this that go on at other interviews. Oh yeah, like uh the last interview I did, I um I was really tired that day and to be frank, like the whole day I was dreading doing this interview. And I, I go into the interview and I'm like, you know what? These people are cool, but I'm just going to have some fun with this. And so they're like, so what would you what would you call your your genre? And I was just like, well, I'd, I'd call it smooth jazz. And I start talking for like five minutes about smooth jazz. And they're like looking at each other like, what the heck is going on? Until I'm finally like, I I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they finally got it. But yeah. um but every now and then I, I, I like to keep interviewers on their toes for no Most reason. It's the band name. It just sounds cool. Like our band name. What about everyone it? Everyone wants the origin. Oh, yeah. Everybody wants the origin of the band name. Did we give you the origin of the band name? You know, I can't remember we talked about it last time or not, but that's OK. Go ahead and uh, let's talk about it because. There's probably a lot of people that haven't heard the story yet. So we came up with it after we named ourselves. 
<laughs> Basically, in short, we were th- for the band name. We were thinking, uh, we were thinking of naming it like something along the lines of Stereo Static, but of course, that was a taken name, and it didn't quite sit right. The day later, my dad walks in the front door, and he's like. I got it. And I'm like, that's great. What do you what do you got? He was like, Stonewall Static. That's your band name. And I was like, that's great. What the heck does it mean? And we settled on it basically meaning immovable, Uh, like being immovable in what you believe and the faith that you've been given by God is immovable and it can't be taken away from you. Because it's a it is a good and perfect gift from the Father. It's a double entendre. Stone walls don't move, and but it's also static, like extra static. I know what we have not talked about yet. Do you have any videos coming out anytime soon? You working on that or thinking about that? We're working on what we think might be a trilogy of videos, starting with Cozy Town, because it was originally co- the Cozy Town music video was originally supposed to be the start of a music video trilogy. Um, but we're, we're going to see where that ends up taking us as we mull over options. Cause things change after you've been sitting on them for a year. So we're going to try to keep as close to what we originally had as possible. But to give a hint in our plan, there are definite plans for a Mike and Margaret music video. Ooh, good choice. I think that's going to be great. Kingdom Come Festival, you're like the first night, which is Thursday night. You're going to be like playing late, like direct support that night, right? <laughs> we're we're clo- really close. Don't be to laughing, it, which, Josh. Which is a huge honor. No, that, that, that's why I'm laughing, because I'm like, oh, my God. When that's- we when we got presented a 9 p.m. Uh-huh. time slot, we were floored. Look at that. Like, well, well, go on. You were laughing. You got well, more to say. It's just because it's like, you it's know. It's real, dude. It's almost funny because you don't know what else to do. Yeah, you don't know what else to do because it's like, you know, I've been I, I, I've been listening to Disciples since I was like 12 years old. You know, um, I've been we used to hear Boiling Point at the BMX track. We used to race BMX bikes on. And man, um, Grave, Grave Robber, me and Daniel have been listening yeah, to. Yeah, for 14. Yeah, 14 years old. And so like. It's already cool that we get to play with all these people that we've looked up to. And then now all of a sudden, like, we're labeled as, like, 9 p.m. time slot, like, prime time. It's like, what do we do to deserve this? Yeah. Well, congratulations on that. Thank, Thank you. you. It's it's really cool. And because it's so late, we are we are bringing as much lighting in of our show as, as we can. So we're, we're trying to bring the whole thing as much as we can. Are y'all going to stay over for some of the other days? We're going to be there Friday. We got to leave. Friday. Yeah, all day Friday. We got to leave Saturday morning. So we're going to miss a couple of our favorites. But uh, we really wanted to be able to hang out and enjoy the festival. We never get to. We never. We're always we, working them. Yeah, we're always working the festivals. We're always throwing up all the production and everything like for Chains Unchained and all. Like Rock in the River, all the other festivals. So it, it's fun to finally get a chance to just go be around and exist. So what might we hear this weekend? Uh, we're just we're just going to play um, some smooth jazz over <laughs> and over again. No, we're going to we're going to play Tennessee whiskey. Yeah, like but that's that's the only one. Tennessee whiskey, but we'll just the some, chorus. Um, play some Creed. Probably Creed. Creed. Lots of Creed. Can you take me high? <laughs> no, Perfect. You will hear many new songs off the new album, and you'll hear some old ones too. And some songs beyond. Yes. And some, songs. some covers too. We've got two covers. So these interviews are always kind of awkward when uh, they're going to air after the event has happened, but we might meet up and talk while we're there. Yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, I'm going to let you go. I can't wait to see you on Thursday night. Absolutely. Love seeing you. All right. Good night. Take good care. Night. Okay. Now for the bonus segment of this interview. I thought it would be fun if we followed up after they played KCF to see how the experience was for everybody. So we found a nice quiet place and recorded this segment for you. Hope you enjoy it. Okay. Guys, you played last night. It was awesome. Tell us, what is your favorite festival, and why is it KCF? 
so, um, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, look, hey, look. I don't remember getting any banana pudding at any other festival, so. Okay. I think that's why it's my favorite. Okay. But in all honesty, no, the staff at KCF, everything about it was unlike anything we've ever experienced before. Everyone's punctual, helping us out, knowing exactly what we got to do. And can we tell you, the crowd was something else. Yes. The, everyone was involved. They were. Everyone was happy to be there. And it's just, there's nothing like it. Nothing like it. How about you, Caleb? It was really cool just having having an audience there that was just glued to every band that got on stage, no matter who they were, no matter what they were playing. It was like that crowd was a crowd that was there to support live music and to be there for all of the bands that traveled from far and wide or maybe even really close by to play the festival. It is a true music lovers crowd and that is always my favorite to play for how was it getting to play maybe some of your new ones for the first time it was good uh playing some of them for the first time since dropping the new album was was a good feeling but it it was a different feeling because we got to play for a lot of people who had never seen us before which uh as of recent has been pretty uncommon but getting to play for this new crowd, showing them some of our new material, some of our old material, and letting them know a bit more of who we are as a whole was a was a fun experience and seeing the reaction of people and the reception to what we were throwing down last night was was really cool and really humbling. So an unusual thing happened, everything went smoothly. Yeah. Everything went smoothly, shockingly. I'm trying to think of something like bad that happened that we tried to cover up to let nobody know, but I can't think of anything. The only thing I can think of um, on my end is I was having trouble singing because I'm not, I wasn't used to the air here yet. (laughs) And I was having trouble breathing because the air here is very different than Texas. So I, by halfway through the show, I felt like spent and I was like, how am I going to keep doing this? But, you know, we, we plowed through a couple of voice cracks, but you know, it makes the show more human, I guess. Yeah. Persevered through. (laughs) But I think the the lack of issues and everything going smoothly is just a testament to how good the volunteer staff is here because we had there were three people alone just helping move drum sets up and down the stage which most festivals like whenever you get volunteers moving equipment it gets a little bit disorganized but it was just it was a well-oiled machine and all the volunteers here they know what they're doing and they have a passion for everything and that's the stuff that makes makes these events happen because like without the volunteers without the staff who love doing what they do this stuff doesn't happen so all we do is just get up there and play they're the ones who make it happen so well i thought y'all did amazing i loved hearing the new stuff and i can't wait to hear more awesome thank you (laughs) thank you all right well thanks for doing a little second interview You're very welcome. You're very welcome. And I hope to see you out there at another show soon. Woohoo! Woo! Yeah. Thank you for listening. Stay tuned for more great music. And check out my blog page on the Solid Rock Radio website for my guests' social media links. If you've missed any of my past interviews, you can find them uploaded to podcast.solidrockradio.org. Have a wonderful week, and let's be kind to one another.